Hello again. We're now looking at estimation in Chapter 10. First of all, estimation is about trying to obtain the value of population parameters based on samples. So all the work we did in the last chapter on sampling will be useful. So here we'll be taking a look at two kinds of estimators, point and interval estimators. We'll take a look at the <coughs> excuse me, the concept of a confidence interval and we'll compute confidence interval for population means and population proportions and then finally try and work out some sample size calculations for given standard errors. So the basic idea is first. First of all, population parameters are usually unknown because they depend on the whole population. For example, if I want the mean age of Australians, I've got to measure the age or ask for the age of every Australian. But what we can do is we can use some appropriate sample statistic to estimate population parameters. So the sample statistic here we'll just call W and just a general parameter we'll call theta. So we call W the estimator of theta and the observed value of W. W here is an uppercase letter which is a random variable. And the smaller case is its observed value is an estimate of theta. For example, we know that the usual sample sample mean is an estimator of population mean mu and the observed value x bar is an estimate of mu. We said that w is an unbiased estimator of the parameter theta if the expected value or the average value or the mean of w is equal to theta. So this is in some way some nice property to have to have unbiasedness because at least on average the value of the parameter is equal to the actual value of the statistic or the, the estimator is equal to the thing we're trying to estimate. So we use two types of estimators, point and interval. So point is a single observation, single point, such as x bar here, and interval we'll see as we go through. So the common estimators we know from before are sample mean, x bar, estimates population mean, and we know it's unbiased because the mean of x bar is mu, and we know variance of x bar is sigma squared upon n from our previous work on sampling. The other one we know is the sample variance, 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of x minus x bar squared. This is an unbiased estimator. Now in the past we have divided here by n minus 1 and we didn't say why. The reason is with n minus 1 there, s squared is an unbiased estimator of the population variance sigma squared. And we have a quick look at the proof of this. So we start off by looking at the property that comes from the equation for variance. So I know that the variance of x is e of x squared minus the mean all squared. So I turn this around, then I get e of x squared is the variance of x plus the mean all squared. And we also know from our earlier work on chapter 1, or chapter 3 actually, that the sum of xi minus x bar squared is the sum of xi squared minus nx bar squared. And so if I apply the first result to xi squared, I get e of xi squared is the variance of xi plus the mean of xi squared, which is sigma squared plus mu squared. The same for x bar is variance of x bar plus e of x bar squared. Variance of x bar is the sigma squared upon n. We know that from before. And the mean of x bar is mu squared. If I put all this together now, if I'm taking a look at the mean, the expected value of n minus 1 s squared, that's what I have, the expression here. Uh, this I know becomes the sum of x i squared minus n x bar squared. <coughs> and then if I break up this, I get the sum of the of the expected values of x i squared minus n times e of x bar squared. Now here, the x i squared have, have explicit value sigma squared plus mu squared from the last slide. x bar squared, explicit value there is sigma squared upon n plus mu squared. If I just break up all the sum, that I'm adding this quantity n times, I get n sigma squared plus n mu squared. The n's cancel off here, and I get sig mi minus sigma squared and minus n mu squared. So these cancel off, and I've got n sigma squared minus 1 sigma squared, that's n minus 1 sigma squared. So with n minus 1 there, n minus 1 there, if I remove the n minus 1's, I get that e of x squared, e of x squared is sigma squared. So the sample variance is an unbiased estimator of population variance. But note,
S is not unbiased. So what I do use, <coughs> excuse me, what we do use is the sample standard deviation to estimate population standard deviation sigma is no longer unbiased, and that's important to note. Okay, so what about population proportion? Well, I can estimate population proportion by sample proportion. So we know from before that the sample here is my x1 to xn Bernoulli trials which are looking at uh, so the n trials here represent the uh, individual samples if you like and each of them is Bernoulli so we know that that takes the values the, each of them is either one or zero depending on if we, if we have success on the earth trial and so the sample proportion as we saw in the last chapter is essentially a sample mean um, but if you look at the sum of these xi's as just an x over there then this x is binomial and so uh, we've got the results from there for this proportion p hat and its distribution so we'll, we'll see how to deal with that later on <coughs> now some ideas of uh, comparing estimators if I've got two estimators w1 and w2 then they're both unbiased estimators that means that on average the value uh, of these things, the mean of these things is theta then we'd say that one of them, W1, is a better unbiased estimator of theta if it has a lower variance. So the variance of W1 is at least as less than or equal to the variance of W2, we say that, that W1 is a better estimator. So this is an interesting idea and so quite often we have uh, estimators that are different and we can work out what's going on. So one idea for example here is if I have got say x bar my sample mean and that's based on, say, a sample of size 100. And I've got another one here, say, Y bar, and that's based on a sample of 200. And let's suppose each of these is from the same population, so the mean for these is mu and the variance for these is sigma squared. So now that the variance of x bar here is sigma squared upon n, so it's sigma squared upon 100, and the variance here of the y bar is again sigma squared upon n, sigma squared upon 200. So you can see clearly here the variance of this one is smaller than the variance of this one. So here y bar is a better estimator than x bar simply because it's from a larger sample size. So that's one simple example of how these things work. But when you do some more of this estimation in higher level stats you'll find more of these kinds of ideas. Alright, so the next thing is confidence intervals and we'll take a look at that in the next session. Let's see.